Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about something that Curiosity Mr. discovered on Mars in June of 2018. This is Curiosity right here and today I'm going to show you some of the really cool tools you can use to explore this mission and to learn more about Mars in general. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this right here is actually a free simulation available from uh, NASA directly, and this is uh, known as Experience Curiosity. Basically, this is a, a learning tool. It's not so much a simulation, not so much a, a game even. It's just a learning tool about the mission, and you can actually control the Curiosity using uh, your keyboard, using your mouse as well. And here, I believe the controls are done mostly by clicking on objects. So here, yeah, there we go. I think it's going to start moving here. And as you can see, this is actually 20 times the actual speed. So Curiosity is a super, super slow object. This was uh, landed on Mars back in 20, uh, 2012. And it, it was actually a pretty exciting mission because it, it had a lot of really interesting instruments on board. And uh, some of them you can actually explore by clicking the button here. It, uh, this, uh, there's a lot of drills, there's a lot of um, analyzers, there's even a laser here that can shoot into rock and basically look at what's inside the rock. Uh, and using a set of these instruments, um, this particular rover was able to discover really cool stuff on Mars, and uh, this was discovered back in May of 2018, but published in two papers in June of 2018. Now, um, I'm going to post a link for this in the description. You can actually explore it by yourself. There's even uh, some commentary here. You can actually... Pahrump Hills is where we got our first taste of a Martian mountain. Curiosity arrived at Pahrump Hills very cool. in September very, 2014. Very cool. Very cool. After... Uh, so you can actually listen to this and learn a little bit more about the mission, what they did here. And basically, uh, the idea here is they landed in the lake uh, deposit, or I guess uh, a lake bed, that is. Um, and this is where there used to be a lot of water and this is how we discovered that Mars actually definitely had water and there's actually a picture here that shows you uh, whale, rock, whale rock is as epic as the mammal for which it is named this rock shows a classic example of what we call cross bedding in the layers that make up the rock cross bedding is like a snapshot frozen in time of the waves of sand that flowed in water thank you sir uh, whose name I do not know uh, basically uh, we discovered uh, signs of previous water from billions of years ago but I actually wanted to uh, look at this mission in uh, another video game that I have called Take on Mars. I haven't actually used this in forever. It's a really, really cool simulation of Mars and what it's like to be on Mars. Now, this is actually from the same creators uh, that made games like um, Arma, Arma 2 and Arma 3. This is basically a very realistic simulation of Mars. And here we have a bunch of scenarios. These are really, really cool to explore uh, just to learn stuff and to kind of see how difficult it is to do things on Mars. But we're going to just play through this because it has a really, really cool cinematic mode and it just looks brilliant and very, very beautiful. This game does cost money, though, so uh, I'm obviously not promoting this, but if you do want to try something that's educational, this is a cool game to try. So this simulation actually starts with the actual landing, and this is kind of cool because it's very, very realistic. You see the uh, heat shield separating and the actual rover being kind of deposited uh, onto the surface. Very, very cool. Uh, and while it's doing this, let me start kind of explaining to you what uh, this rover discovered in 2018, which is basically six years after this mission. So it was using a drill to collect uh, some of the uh, sedimental deposits from from this bedrock we landed in, on in and this is like i said it's based on a kind of a lake that used to be here billions of years ago and um it basically was able to collect a piece of a rock that was about three billion years old and it kind of drilled into the ground first it drilled i think it was like a depth of about five centimeters which is about um what is it like 15 20 inches Okay, here we go, the landing. Uh, it took me a while to process the centimeter to inch thing. I always get confused, even though I I'm, I work with a lot of people that don't really know centimeters or inches. Anyway, uh, so what it actually did, and this is actually what the rover looks like. It's, it's sort of like a selfie perspective here. Uh, it's hard to control this thing. There you go. This is what we look at, uh, we're looking at here. And you can control this with your keyboard and mouse, and which is really, really awesome. It looks very realistic. There's that parachute that landed us with the little booster device thingy. And here we can actually now move around and try to try to go somewhere. Let's go over there. I don't know what that is actually, but I think there's a rock there. 
and it's one of the first locations we'll be visiting. Um, so it drilled inside one of these rocks, and it was a depth of about five centimeters, and uh, it uh, collected a tiny sample, and then basically used a uh, one of the devices here, which I don't know if I can find. It's one of the instruments that we have here, but it's basically like a, like an oven. It's it just heats up things. It makes them really hot. We do have a laser here though, which is really awesome. You can totally just use the laser to like laser things. New verb. Uh, but uh, the thing is, it doesn't actually show you anything, which doesn't look as cool. It sounds cool, but it doesn't look cool. Um, and anyway, so it uh, heated it up, and as it started heating up the sample, it started releasing a lot of really interesting st stuff that normally we associate with organic uh, deposits from basically life that lived on Earth billions of years ago. So in other words, if I were to take a rock, sedimental rock, and put it in an oven and start heating it up, it would start releasing these organic molecules and methane that would normally be associated with uh, dead bacteria and dead animals from millions and billions of years ago. And this is exactly what we found right here on Mars, and this is exactly the type of a uh, analysis Curiosity mission was able to basically do on Mars. And we can't really explain this in any other way, yet at least, other than we, what we actually drilled into and what we picked up and what we heated up and what was released uh, were organic molecules from life on Mars three billion years ago. I mean, that's kind of the only explanation we have so far, but there are other explanations because these are just organic molecules and they could have been created by something completely different. For one, we know that on the surface of Mars, like if you were to look around here, you would not really find any organic molecules on the surface because Mars has practically no atmosphere. It also has uh, no magnetosphere to protect it from radiation. And so uh, it's been bombarded by really highly radioactive stuff every single second. Ooh, look at that, I got an achievement. $500,000 for walking around Mars? I'll take that. Anyway, so uh, because of this high radiation striking Mars all the time, organic molecules kind of basically dissipated. They got uh, destroyed, in other words. And uh, inside the sediment that we found, which was underneath uh, the surface, we were able to actually find these organic molecules, but they could have been actually created in other ways. Like, for example, we've actually found unusual organic molecules on comets, on asteroids, and we now can explain their creation using non-life means. We actually found a chemical formula that explained how those things were uh, created in space. For Mars, though, we don't just have that yet, so we can't really explain this in any other way, but there might be a non-organic way. In other words, there might this might not be a sign of previous life at all. This might be just a thing we don't understand about chemistry yet. But due to the fact that we were able to detect this, and due to the fact that this is in a what seemed to be a lake, in the conditions that should have been able to support life back three billion years ago, uh, and right now I'm actually trying to position myself so I can use the laser, but I can't seem to find the sweet spot. But anyway, yeah, due to the conditions and the environment that was present on Mars back then, oh, here we go. Uh, let's do the laser. I, that's all it does. It just makes me wait, and it, then it pulses a little bit. Uh, you don't really see the laser because it's invisible. Um, anyway, so uh, due to all of the uh, factors involved here, so liquid water, um, most likely atmosphere, life conditions that, or conditions that would be able to support life, and of course the fact that um, we now know that Mars most likely had very Earth-like conditions back then, uh, we think that there might have been a life, and this could be the sign that life did exist. So that's just one of the things we found, and there's another paper that actually was released about the same time from a very similar analysis, but this was an analysis of atmosphere, and uh, since the probe has been here for six years, which is equivalent to three years on Mars, it was able to analyze the... Let me, let me try to move this a little bit. The atmosphere, very non-dramatic turn, atmosphere of Mars, and it, it found that... Um, Every single year, every single summer, there's more methane in the atmosphere. Every single winter, the methane levels go down. Up in the summer, down in the winter. This may have an explanation that's not life. Basically, there could be a completely unrelated explanation for why methane changes. But because we know methane on, on Earth does seem to fluctuate with uh, periods of life activity, we made an assumption that maybe just maybe, maybe just maybe, there is some sort of an underground, so somewhere down there, down, down, down there, which I can't seem to point at right now, uh, there might be bacteria living underneath the surface that is actually using uh, underground water 
and whatever else it, it finds to create methane and release it into the atmosphere. And then every winter when it gets colder, it kind of stops activity or doesn't do as much activity as before. So there is that explanation, or there's a completely natural non-life explanation that apparently, maybe just maybe, the water itself interacts with the rock and releases methane through the rock. So there's, there's that as well. So for all of the discoveries we made in May of 2018, that was published in June of 2018, there is a potential explanation that doesn't actually involve life on Mars. But it's a lot cooler to think that it's life, and it's also... There's just factors. That there's a lot of factors here that show us that maybe it is actually from life. And I'm gonna go look at my parachute that's somewhere over there. And then maybe use a laser on it. I just bumped into something. Not a good driver. Not a good driver on Mars. Bump, bumped into something again. So anyway, so um, just to summarize, we found organic molecules that were released from a sedimental rock uh, or potentially sedimental rock, a rock that was inside underneath the ground that could have had sediments in it that may have come from life three billion years ago. And we also discovered that there is a methane fluctuation in the summer and the winter. And these signs, together with the fact that we are in a lake bed, suggest that maybe there was life on Mars and maybe there still is life on Mars underneath the surface that we need to discover by drilling into the surface a little bit more and then looking inside the depths of the Martian uh, crust. Oh, I don't know if I'll survive this. Hey, look at that, it's pretty stable. Uh, now, the cool thing about these missions on Mars is that, well, they don't really do anything practical to us, but they do uh, tickle our curiosity, which is why this mission is called Curiosity. And this is exactly what uh, I'm hoping will cause us to go on Mars and investigate in more detail. Elon Musk is already on board with us. He's definitely trying to put us on, on the planet. Um, but hopefully the governments around the world, including the US government, will actually smarten up and send a few missions here to actually try to land and establish a colony because this is something that will allow us to understand what's really happening here and it's really, really important for the future of humanity as well because we need to start getting out of, outside of our shell, outside of our box, which is Earth. We need to kind of try to find a way to escape it and start exploring the worlds outside. But of course, other than that, uh, we don't really know much else about Mars just yet. This is the only discovery we've made in the last uh, few months. And uh, it wasn't really like a breaking news sort of thing. It wasn't a news on a, in the top page or anything. But it is exciting because it allows us to imagine that Mars may have been an Earth-like habitable world with actual organisms and creatures and like crazy Martian fish that was swimming in this lake and existing here for millions of years until Mars changed and turned into this, that you're looking at right now, in excluding the parachute. And basically, this is kind of what may happen to Earth one day. So we need to study this just to understand if it may happen to Earth, and if so, how do we avoid it? I don't know why this parachute is inflated so much. It shouldn't be. There is not enough atmosphere to create this. But it looks like I'm stuck at it now, and I think my mission here is over because I will not be able to get out of this net I got myself into. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And do try the game if you have it. Uh, I don't really recommend purchasing this just yet because it's still early access. Uh, but it is worth if you like exploring various space missions and if you just want to explore worlds that you would not be able to imagine otherwise. Otherwise, check out the free um, link I posted below. This is from NASA directly. And I believe it was actually created by a small team of people who even has have this actual app posted on a GitHub. I found it by accident. Um, this was based on a some sort of a competition NASA created back in 2012, where they wanted to create an app that is able to generate Martian environments based on some pre-written code. And they did a good job at that. And this is essentially what you're looking at right here. They were able to create this using Unity Engine. And well, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I kind of wanted to show you these two simulations and hopefully kind of push you towards learning more about Mars yourself by exploring these simulations, by listening to these commentaries, and by basically poking around and kind of moving things around here and learning about the mission by investigating it yourself. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and if you have any other things that I uh, you want me to mention about this mission or Mars in general, or if you know something about Curiosity I didn't mention, do post it in the comments below, and I'll come back to it in one of the few videos um, in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, I'm gonna go and explore Mars a little bit more in my Euro uh, Curiosity rover, 
and hopefully find some alien life here. Space out, and as always, bye bye. Now, what if I use my laser on a parachute? Will it set on fire? The answer is no, because there is no oxygen, but I still want to try. I still want to try. Come on, laser. Don't fail me this time. Here we go.